Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the researchers at Google has posted a blog saying that maybe the Linux kernel is understaffed by the tune to 100 engineers. Now, how can that be true when there are thousands of contributors and millions of lines of code and so many patches that are posted? Is really Linux understaffed? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so we all recognize that Linux is a phenomenal success. It is the biggest software collaboration project in the whole of computing history. And it has produced the Linux kernel, and of course around that come all the other things that we use from desktop stuff to tools, to utilities, to system monitoring, web servers, email servers, the whole stuff all built around the Linux kernel. And it's used in servers across the world from mainframes all the way down to something small like the Raspberry Pi. But of course, because it is so large, because it is so successful, then the responsibilities, the expectations, what people want from it grow in accordance with how popular it is. And that's true of, of course, every project. If nobody was interested in Linux, nobody would care if it was understaffed in any way, or they wouldn't care if the processes, uh, the software development processes weren't working as they should be. But because it is so important, because it is so popular, then these things need to be looked at. Now, the security researcher uses the analogy of a car. If you have a car that takes you from A to B, you got there in comfort, didn't have any problems, you say, well, that was great, that was easy. And Linux is the same. You're running it on your Raspberry Pi, it's running on your web server, it's running on a, on a big mainframe. When it works, well, thank you, Linux, that's great. But what happens when things go wrong? What happens when it breaks down? In particular, when there are bugs in the Linux kernel, bugs in the tools that we use around the Linux kernel, and then of course these can lead to security problems. How are they addressed and how are the fixes pushed out to the users of Linux? Now, some people have a misconception about Linux. They think it's, you know, it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Any development that's done is just for bringing in new features and, and making things uh, even greater. But here's a shocking uh, number for you. The Linux stable Linux kernel has 100 bug fixes per week. 100 per week. So it's 400, 450 per month bug fixes, some of which can have security implications. And often the security implications aren't known at the time the bug is fixed. Only later on, when further analysis is done of, of let's say, one particularly nasty bug, they say, oh, good job that was not exploited because that could have also led to security problems. So bugs are fixed because they're bugs, not necessarily because they are security problems. But think about this way. You are now a vendor of a, a, a Linux-based technology. Android, for example, uses the Linux kernel. You've got all these web services. You've got you know, Amazon and Google. They're all running all of their services based on Linux. Now, at some point, there's a bug found, 450 a month, in fact. How do you roll those into the new version of Android? How do you roll those into the latest version that's running, uh, that's keeping you know, up the banks up and running or keeping the websites up and running? How do you do that? Now, most Linux servers are not running the greatest and latest version of the Linux kernel. Now, there are different types of Linux kernel. There's the latest and the greatest under development. There are what's called stable kernels, which get some uh, point up releases while the next kernel is being updated. And then there are long term support kernels. And all of these kernels need to have the same bug fix applied to each one of them. So, for example, the Android uh, loses Linux. Now, Android 12 is using uh, Linux 4.19 at its best. It's actually able to use older kernels as well. Now, 4.19 came out and when? 2021? No. 2020? No. 2019? No. 2018? Yes. So even the latest and greatest version of Android is using a Linux kernel that can be several years old. And when they find bugs in new versions, of the Linux kernel, they go back and say, does it exist in the other ones? And it has to be backported. So what can happen is that each vendor is looking at the current bugs that are being fixed. And it says, we have to fix that bug that was in the latest kernel. We found out it's also in this older kernel. That's what's running on our production services. It's vital that we keep that secure and safe. So they have to backport those fixes. So there are 
internal engineering hours used to do that back porting. And then that effort is duplicated across multiple different vendors under a whole bunch of different circumstances. So the same exercise is repeated time and time again, independently across the world in different places. And this is where we get the idea of the tragedy of the commons. Now the commons uh, in UK and Ireland is this term used for common grazing ground. Now, if you ever heard of the Wombles of Wimbledon, it's the Wombles of Wimbledon Common, are we? Wimbledon Common, it's actually near to where I grew up, is actually a common grazing ground historically. And it, what it basically means is public land that anybody can go on. It's not owned by any particular private person. Now, of course, when you are, have grazing rights on common ground, if there's no kind of rules, if there's no kind of structure from society, from the local village or whatever that's implement, that's using that land and implementing those grazing rights, then of course you can get overgrazing and the resource gets depleted because everybody's looking for their own interest. I want to put extra cattle on, I'm gonna do it, but I wanna put extra cattle on, I'm gonna do it. And you get this same thing as an open resource, Linux is an open resource, free to use by anybody, then you get the people saying, well, for my interest, I need this bug fixed in the production that's running on this huge set of web servers, our whole business is basically and I want it fixed now. Oh, but so do we. And so you get these people duplicating all of their efforts, okay, which actually ultimately detriments from the kernel itself because those are hours that are being wasted in doing the same thing that could be used on improving other areas of the kernel. So some vendors might say, well, we can't fix 450 kernels. Now you and I know whenever Windows or the Mac says, you've got a new update, you need to reboot. We kind of go, oh no, I need to reboot. I've got all these tabs open in my web browser. I've got all these programs open. I've got to save all my artwork that I'm designing. I've got to, all this code that I'm writing. I've got this document that I'm doing. I've got to shut it all down. It got to reboot. And of course we just as consumers find these reboots because fixes have been applied as a, a pain. Now imagine if you are running a huge thousands of servers running some big website, okay, and they say every week another hundred fixes need to be done. You need to keep rebooting. So you'll be rebooting all those servers every single week. There'll be loss of time. You've got to install it. There's a whole bunch of management issues about getting that running. So of course, a lot of vendors, they just say, well, we're not gonna fix 450 bugs a month. We're gonna look at that 450 and decide which are the two or three most important ones and fix those because those are the critical ones. Of course, the problem is how do you detect those? So again, you get a duplication of effort because they're all trying to look at the bugs and say, does this have an impact on the kernel that we're running in our production version. Now, when it comes to security, there is the CVE numbers, the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, and that does give a guide about how severe a particular bug is, but it itself is an imperfect system. There have been cases of bugs that were fixed and they were never even assigned a CVE number, and only years later, someone said, actually, that should have been assigned a CVE number because that's really nasty. If they had actually exploited that, we'd have been in real trouble. It never even got a CVE number. And sometimes CVE numbers are assigned but only after the several months. So it's not a perfect system. So if you want to be ultra secure, you have to fix all 450 bugs, which in itself, again, is not practical. So the Google researchers reckon there is a lack of up to 100 engineers who should be working on the Linux kernel and on the surrounding tools, including the compiler. And those 100 engineers should be working to make sure that the kernel remains stable and has uh, as few bugs as possible. And actually, at the time of writing this program, there are hundreds and hundreds of open bugs that are documented, logged, this is a problem, this doesn't work, that are not fixed in the Linux kernel, hundreds and hundreds of them. And they need to be fixed because each one, of course, is a potential security issue, but of course, each one is also a potential issue for lack of stability and for data loss and for all kinds of other problems that could be occurring. Some people, they seem to think that Linux kernel is just magic, it magically, it just works, magically these things happen. In fact, I had a really bizarre conversation with someone in the comments when I was talking about uh, a CBL Mariner, the Microsoft Linux distributor, they were saying if Microsoft switched to using Linux for the Windows kernel, they would just need one engineer who would need to compile the kernel every so often, and that would be his only job. And I was like going, you clearly don't understand the magnitude of the work that goes in to getting the Linux kernel working and the magnitude of backporting and monitoring and tracking and releasing. And any software engineer would tell you, just ask them about 
the philosophy of release management and change management and you'll have a really long conversation. You may find it boring. But the point is this. It's not just a case of you need a guy to magically compile the kernel. Hey, I've got a Linux kernel. That's great. It's way, way more complicated than that. So really, this is a clarion call from Google who itself does have internal engineers that just work on Google's internal systems. But of course, it is also funding external engineers who just work on upstream stuff. Now, Google has been uh, upstreaming its bug fixes on Android and Chrome OS. And so it's saying that everybody else should be upstreaming their work rather than just working on the downstream stuff. Whether that will happen or not, we don't know. But this is a common resource and it needs to be managed in terms of security and bug fixes, not new features, not where it's going. In terms of maintenance, it needs to be managed so that every device from a smartphone, a Raspberry Pi, right up to a big mainframe to a supercomputer can benefit from all of those bug fixes. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I hope you're following me on Twitter at Gary Explains. I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.